Hello. Are we live? Can you guys hear me? Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's good to see everybody here. It's been a minute. It's actually been this is so this is the third time I've been doing a live stream and it's been about a year and a couple months since 400,000 subscriber special. So it's quite crazy because uh, after like my first year of doing YouTube full time 2021, I hit 200,000 subs in like eight months. And then it was another six months after that, in which I hit uh, 400,000, which was crazy. So like a year and a half, 400,000 subs, which is mind blowing. And that was like all during COVID. And then since then, it's taken me another year and a bit to uh, get to 600,000. It's a bit of a slow burn, but uh, I, I can talk about that, which I'm like very happy to because like the last year and a bit has been absolutely amazing for me. I've slowed down video production. I'm sure you guys like all want me to be posting like every other week, every single week, which was like my old schedule, but I'm doing longer trips, experimenting with some things. And just also, uh, I've been like taking a lot more time for like myself, which has been absolutely wonderful. Um, so yeah, less content, but more uh, sanity in my brain. Uh, Cause like my number one goal uh, for YouTube is I wanna do this for a long time. I wanna do this for 10, 15 years. And I know that a lot of YouTubers, they burn out because they, uh, they just get overwhelmed with uh, upload schedules and stuff. So for me, being able to do this long-term means like a slower schedule, means like less momentum, but it means that I can put my heart into this thing every single day. Um, yeah. Anyways, let's get going on questions. It's good to see everybody here. I'm going to try to my best to answer everybody. I think my two brothers are in the chat. Uh, if I do believe, I thought that they were mods before. I'm not really sure. If not, apologize if I ask questions or I answer questions more than once, but let's, uh, let's get into this. How is the truck? Get all the issues fixed. Yes, the truck is great. Um, I had a, I had a couple thousand dollars worth of repairs, but she's been running amazing. There's it's like 270,000 kilometers now. So, um, little things pop up. One of the big issues that I'm struggling with right now is like these forerunners, the rear view, or, sorry, the rear window is supposed to go up and down. And I spent like a couple hundred bucks paying some guy to like try to figure out what was wrong with it. And we couldn't get the resolve of love for that, uh, rear window to come up and down because it's quite nice. Uh, are you in a really late? Are you in a relationship with anyone? Yes, I'm in a relationship. Me and my girlfriend, Fiona, we've been dating for about six months now. And I took her, actually, we went to Phillip Edward Island. Uh, it was her first canoe camping trip. And we did that a couple weeks ago. Filmed it on a GoPro. Um, wasn't planning to like do anything with it because it was supposed to be just, you know, like my like her introduction to canoe camping. It was like a special thing between us. But uh, I kind of filmed a little bit, mostly hand bombed it, kind of turned it into a video. So I, I might post that if you guys want me to. Yeah, but we've been we've been together for about six months. Xander rocking the mullet. It fits. Thanks, man. <laughs> You're from Philippines. You're my favorite YouTuber. Thank you. Any plans on exploring anything overseas? I'm from Australia. Would love to see you exploring a bit. Yeah, man. I would love to. There's a lot of great YouTubers out there. Um, Scotty gone walkabout. It's one of them. He's always doing canoe camping. I think he's like one of the only guys doing canoe camping out in Australia. And it's just like, so badass. um, field days and young bloods. Is it? Yeah. They're like doing amazing survival videos on the coast. Australia is just like such a cool place. And I've always wanted to go. Um, yeah, haven't, I don't have any plans, but I'm sure it's going to happen at some point. Can you say, can you say hello, Frederick? Hello, Frederick. Um, See, I think my brothers are in the chat, but I just can't see them. Oh, here they are. Uh, ben. So uh, I'm going to have my brothers. They're going to be kind of relaying questions, so it's easier for me to see. Uh, Xander, what camera do you use? I use an A7S III with a Rode uh, Video Mic Pro. And this is the lens that I dumped in the water. Actually, this whole camera I dumped in the water in my survival video. Everything's working. Everything works great. There's a little bit of like little droplets. I don't, you, you won't be able to see that, but oh yeah, a little bit right there. You can see a little bit of the water behind the lens, but it didn't affect the picture quality. I filmed the seven day trip, which I'm editing now and it's going to be out next week, but I, uh, the picture quality is perfect. So this whole thing was in the water for two minutes or two, two seconds, pulled it out and it's, it's good. 
So A7S3, uh, love it, been using it for a couple of years. And before that, it was an A7 III. How often do you see bears? Not often enough. Uh, me and my girlfriend, we when we were doing Philip Edward Island, we saw a mom and two cubs, and it was the best sighting of bears I've seen in a long time. Uh, I got the, sh I got the, I got the shot on just like my phone here, and uh, would have loved to have my big camera out, but it's what you get sometimes, right? When you see wildlife, it just kind of happens, and you can only do your best to try to capture it, and uh, just did it with my phone. Uh, you actually go indoors sometimes. Yes, I live in a house. I know it's hard to believe, isn't it? Do you carry a fire, firearm when you go hiking for protection? No, I do not. I actually have stopped even carrying bear spray. Um, yeah. What's your day job? Do you go to, did I go to university? Uh, my day job is full-time YouTuber. I've been doing it since 2021. Before that, I was uh, kind of doing like computer brokering and, and modeling. So I would like flip stuff on eBay and uh, the other job was like modeling, which was like a side job. I don't do either of those anymore. And I'm a full-time YouTuber for the last few years. I went to university, um, graduated 2011, University of Western. New England Outdoors, New England Outdoors. What's the best way we can support you aside from views? Would you start selling merch? Yes, I have actually been thinking about doing merch and a certain type of gear for a while. Uh, it's just like finding ways of producing the product. And it's a simple product and I think I can get it done fairly easily. I've just never done anything like that before. So um, yes, I have an awesome idea for some merch that I can sell and I would love to get it out to you guys. It's just a matter of uh, doing it. And I think that's it's gonna be something that everybody can use and everybody can love. Uh, and it's like super useful and that I personally would like and use. So uh, yeah, beside that I have um, another way you guys can support me is I have a, um, buy me a coffee, which I kind of plug in some videos. I don't use much of it. Uh, those are, I mean, for now, it's just those two, I guess. I mean, there's just mostly views and buy me a coffee for now. Uh, Madeline asks, oops, this chat kind of popped up. Uh, how long does it take to edit? Oh, forever. So I used to, I used to give myself about a day to edit for per day that I was out. And, uh, so I would go out for a two day trip. It would take me two days to edit. And that's pretty much how I did things for the last two years. Now it's kind of double that. I've given myself a lot of time to um, just kind of live my life on the side. Uh, I, I have a lot of free time to do things I love, like hang out with friends and family and, uh, and obviously my girlfriend and just have a more relaxed pace. I think before it was a little bit you know, I would come back from the woods, edit really quick, get ready for my next trip, go back out. And that helped with the growth of the channel. But now it's I'm giving myself a little bit more time to edit. And so um, I did a seven day trip and it's actually been getting close to uh, like almost two and a half weeks. But that's because I spent 10 days with my girlfriend. We did a camping trip and uh, we uh, I, I've just been giving myself a little bit more time. I, I've been going to the gym consistently a lot. So like I, that takes time out of my day. Uh, seeing friends and uh slacking looking at in instagram reels you know and watching other youtubers um yeah so usually usually a day per day i'm out so a seven day trip would take seven days etc um where's best for somebody new to camp in canada there's lots of great places i'll go if you're coming to a Ontario Algonquin's a really great one. You can contact many outfitters around like the Algonquin area. Just Google Algonquin Outfitters or Killarney Outfitters. You can go to Google Maps, look at the green areas, look at the parks, or just go to Google and type in best places to camp in Ontario. And then look up the outfitters and you can get hooked up with some outfitters. It might cost you a little bit more because the outfitters are supplying everything, but that's the best way you can do things. So I'm actually uh, working out a trip with an outfitter right now up in... Uh, Wabakimi. So that's going to be my next trip. I'm playing that for two weeks from now. What's your diet? It varies. Lots of fried chicken, you know, when I'm slacking and editing. But uh, when I'm eating healthy, uh, broccoli, chicken, um, sweet potato. You know, I try to eat as healthy as possible. But when you live in the city and there's so many fried chicken restaurants, you can't help yourself sometimes, you know. But staying active kind of keeps me nice and lean. Favorite lakes in Tamagami? Hmm. Lady Evelyn in the area was quite pretty. That's actually going to be my next uh, video that I'm going to put out next week. 
I just did uh, some places in the, I just did the Lady Evelyn River. Uh, favorite lake? I mean, Lake Tamagami is crazy large and beautiful. I caught quite a few uh, smallies there. That was fun. Lady Evelyn's gorgeous. Um, hmm. Hard to tell. Ever have any spooky things happen whilst camping? Uh, no, not really. Like, I mean, when I was younger, every single sound in the woods was a bear or a man with an axe, right? But now it's, you know, chipmunks or, uh, you know, somebody, somebody, somebody creepy lurking in the woods. No, I'm, nothing, nothing crazy. Any advice for a first time backpacking trip? You're not going to know everything the first time you go out and you're going to make mistakes, but try to cover your basis basics, you know, like, you know, you have water, food, uh, have a backpack and comfortable sleeping gear. Um, you're probably gonna have a rough night's sleep your first time. You're going to learn a lot of lessons, whether it be how to keep your, you know, self dry, how to, you know, sleep correctly, you know, how to poop in the woods, all, all these things you're not going to know. And it's going to be a bit of a headache your first time. So my best advice is just try to cover all your bases and just go out there and do it. Will we see more fly fishing? Yes. I was actually fly fish fishing on my last trip. Oh, I was getting right into it. And uh, my rod tip snapped within like the third cast. So weird. Like it wasn't hooked to anything. I don't know. So have you ever rejected a, yeah, but more fly fishing in the future. Have you ever rejected a sponsorship request? If so, why? Yes. I reject them all the time. My um, I'm not going to promote anything that I can't get behind myself and that I don't use myself. And that's kind of my philosophy and my guidelines for anything that I that I promote. I might use things on the channel that I don't use in the future, but I've never pushed them on any, push them on anybody. I'm only ever going to sp be sponsored by or promote things that I personally use or I can get behind. And uh, and yes, I, I'm going to be taking on more sponsors in the future because they're going to help improve the channel quality, uh, help go on larger trips, and um, just improve the general quality overall and kind of ease up my life to allow me to do more trips and go on bigger trips. Um, but I'm only going to take on sponsors that are, that I use personally. And AG1 is one of those. And I've actually, so the next video, uh, there's an AG1 sponsorship. Um, let's see what do we got here. Will we see more fly fishing? Yes. Xander merch is a merch I would actually get. So one thing with the merch is I don't really know what to put on a shirt. What would you guys wear? Let me know. I'm not sure where the best way to contact me, maybe Instagram, maybe uh, in one of my videos. I actually read all the comments, almost all the comments. Nowadays, it's getting hard because I get lots of comments all the time and I'm often out in the woods, but I try to read almost all the comments. Responding to them is a different story. Um, but when it comes to merch, I want you guys to let me know, what would you guys like on a shirt? Say I, I sell some merch, what would you guys like on it? Because I think saying something like Xander or Xander Budnick is, I don't know, would anybody wear a shirt that says Xander Budnick on it? I'm not sure. You guys let me know, what would you like on it? Um, let me know. Does it come with free maple syrup? Yes, of course it comes with, my merch comes with free maple syrup. Don't quote me on that, don't, don't hold me to that either. <laughs> um, what's your favorite book? out of all those books behind you. I said this last time, I really like the book Mindset. That helps kind of just like hone a, um, you know, just a, a good way of thinking. It's all about, what is it even about? Yeah, it's about like some people have fixed mindsets where they think that at a certain point they've learned. It. It's about always having, you know, an open mind and a growth mindset and always trying to learn and understanding that you're not quite always in the right and not being stubborn. And I kind of hold that philosophy in everything I do. It's just looking at things with, you know, an open childish mind and, and being able, not childish, but like at young eyes and being open to criticism and that you're not always right. And being wrong is often great in, in a lot of cases. And there's nothing wrong with that. Do you have any trips planned for BC? No, I don't have any trips. Oh, well, do I? Something might be in the works for the spring. Uh, it'd be another truck camping trip. Um, maybe, maybe your face on the shirt. You want my face on the shirt. Okay. Can kayak or canoe for a beginner? I'd suggest, well, it depends what you're doing, but I would say canoe canoes, unless you're running rapids, like high tech rapids, like a canoe is just going to do more for you. And that's why you see a lot of people taking canoes on larger whitewater trips because you can just fit 
three weeks worth of gear inside a canoe, whereas in a kayak, I mean, you can't really put much in there. So, I mean, there's sea kayaking, which is a different story, but, and people do sea kayaking around Georgian Bay and Lake Superior and stuff, but you can, you can do canoeing in Lake Superior and in Georgian Bay and, and you can fit more gear. I personally would go with a canoe. It's just more versatile. Do you have any pets? No. I like, I think about getting a dog almost every other day, but, uh, no, I don't. What do you think of Joe Robin? I think he's a great guy. He's a OG. He's been in it for a while. And, uh, yeah. What's the origin of your last name? It's Ukrainian. Um, my grandfather came over here from Ukraine when he was about two years old. What made you want to start this YouTube channel being dedicated to camping and in the outdoors? So I've been, so the first, the first video I posted on YouTube was, oh God, was it 20, 2008? And it was a camping video. And uh, it was me and my brother and two friends did the Missinabi River. And that video, that was like 20,000 views in like a couple months or so. Kind of left it, forgot about it. Went to school for video and video theory. Um, and, I, and I always wanted to be a YouTuber of some degree. And I kind of always wanted to be like an adventure and outdoor content. And I, I didn't really know what it was. And, and to be honest, like I, I didn't really realize the, 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 the resource that was in our backyard, which was Ontario's wilderness. And I didn't really even discuss, like it was kind of out of my mind because it was just like, you know, such close proximity. Um, I didn't think to create my channel in that. And I always camped. I camped like once once every couple of years, like every year. And I did car camping trips and it was always there, but like it didn't really click. And I also didn't have like the, the self-esteem to like actually put myself out there as much. So I worked away at like maybe creating a channel for many years. And then uh, one day Max invited me out on a winter camping trip and filmed that. That did well. And it was like, yes, of course, you know, like camping in Ontario is is my niche. Like I love camping. I love the outdoors. I'm good at it. There's a resource here for camping. Um, and that's what I can totally uh, focus my attention into and create my channel around. Oh, I see Tosh self-propelled. Hey, man, I was just texting, texting you like two seconds ago. That's really funny. Um, Anyways, hey Xander, would you ever give some more in-depth gear review? Maybe stuff about working on your canoe or just planning out gear for trips. Yes. Okay. So I often when I film little bits of like fixing up my canoe and stuff, I put it in a larger video. So I'll be like, oh yeah, like on the puck video, I said, oh yeah, I got patches ready for the trip. And I showed like little bits of B-roll, like side clips of me fixing up the canoe, but it was very brief. And I felt before that was kind of like the only way I could fit things in without making a dedicated video and dedicated videos on those subjects kind of seem too niche and not large enough for many people to be interested in. So when I outfitted my canoes this time, I barely, like I filmed them mostly like hand bomb them. Uh, I fixed up patches, by the way, patches is great. She's still doing well. And I outfitted my new canoe, which I'm going to name scratches. Um, because uh, the gel coat scratches it's, it's strong as heck canoe but the, the gel coat scratches quite quite a bit which which is fine it's it's cosmetic um but i outfitted those canoes hand bombed the filming and i was thinking maybe i start a second channel and just you know throw those up on that second channel kind of um pretty slack so it wouldn't involve much editing it would be pretty um low effort and then it would just be extra content and it wouldn't bloat my main channel but it would like give extra content and like fun things that I might do on the side that would also relate to camping and canoeing and all that stuff. So I was thinking about doing that. Actually, I'm just going to do it. This is going to happen. Xander by Nick too. Go subscribe. Uh, it's already launched. There's nothing on it, but uh, go check it out. <laughs> um, anyways, day for it question says approximately what's the percent of your viewers from each country or continent? Do any of them surprise you? Okay, so most of, most of my viewership is from North America, about 60%, and then 10% from the UK, and then another, and then the rest is kind of all over the place. But I often get yeah, people telling me that they're watching from the Philippines, Australia, uh, God, all over the place. I used to, I'm, I'm, when, when the videos blow up more than a couple hundred thousand views, they start to reach different niches and that's when you get people saying like oh i'm, I'm like messaging from india and all this and and uh and like wherever like malaysia or or uh, thailand but 
generally North American crowd, a bit of Europe, Australia. Uh, that team that seems to be the the main demographic. What camera do you use? Already already answered that. So if uh, if if sorry for everybody that's coming in later. If uh, if I read your question and I've already answered that before, I'm just I'm just gonna not answer it before. Are your teeth fake? They are white AF. No, they aren't fake. But I don't know if anybody's noticed. I've been using Invisalign for the last like year or so. So I had like these bumps on my teeth, and I'm gonna be like doing some more like. Like my teeth were all messed up when I was younger. I messed them up. I'm like, I gotta get a lot of tooth work done. Like fillings galore. Um, so just doing tooth work out over the next little bit. If anybody's ever noticed these bumps on my teeth, nobody's ever commented on them. But now y'all know. I use Invisalign. Um, you are awesome. I loved you taking us along on your adventures. My question is, what has happened to Patches? Is she out on some farm living her best life? <laughs> No, Patches is still in the backyard. I took her out uh, with my girlfriend Fiona to Philip Edward Island. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I fixed her up, replaced the entire. In if you follow me on Instagram, I posted on one of my stories that I, uh, you know, the handles, seats, thwart, yoke, uh, all replaced. The, um, the, the hull is just, you know, it's, you know, it used to be a blue canoe. Now it's like a white, more white canoe because the entire coating of it is just like scratched off and it's, it has holes through it that I've patched up with G flex and Kevlar and it, it, they need to be repatched. So that's patches is still around. It's a lar it's too large for soloing all the time. That's why I have my new boat, which is the 15 foot boat. And I've modified it to like have a tripod or a, yeah, like a, like a connected tripod in it. And then I'm actually getting another, uh, another boat, which is a 17 foot prospector. So I'm going to have my 15 foot boat, red boat, 16 foot boat, that's patches. And then a 17 foot boat, which is going to be uh, the next boat. And it's going to be yellow. So stay tuned for that. I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'm going to be, I won't be, I won't be paddling it, but I'm taking that boat out on our October trip with Max and a couple of my brothers or cousin, maybe my dad. Uh, we're doing a uh, longer trip and uh, in the fall. So two people will be uh, paddling that. Has Andrew ever considered coming to California? Yeah, I'd love to come back. I've been there twice when I was once with my family. Uh, we did like a car camping trip, um, went out to Yosemite, did Half Dome. And then I was there many years ago. I did like a whole van thing, uh, like slept in my van and uh, was in Yosemite and a couple other places. Did the whole like West Coast and stuff. Are you going to hang out with Clay again? Yes. So I actually messaged Clay a couple of days ago. I'm like, Clay, take me, take me hunting. I'm gonna, I want to film you. So like, I don't even need to shoot anything or you know hunt anything myself. I just need to hang out with him because the guy's a wealth of knowledge and feel like joining him. I I, I want to be his cameraman, and I I told him like, let me just film you, and uh, yeah. So we might be doing something uh, come fall. Um, he. If he doesn't get an elk, we'll see, right? Like he he's going on an elk hunt. If he doesn't get an elk, he's doing a musket hunt or a yeah flintlock hunt. And he said that I can join him on that. And then if not, there's one in December. The December one's complicated because uh, I have some other plans. But um, yeah, no, definitely want to hang out with Clay again. Okay. What happened to your handmade bow? Oh, it's, yeah, it's, I still got it. Still got it. Oh yeah, check out my paddles. This is a plug for, that's not a plug. I was get, I was gifted these paddles from uh, Halliburton, Halliburton Paddle Shop. And uh, that's where my cottage is. That's where I grew up uh, going to the cottage at my grandparents' cottage. It's like a you know wilderness. And we went to day camp, me, Max, and I think my brothers, we went to day camp at uh, Halliburton Forest and uh, Great guys over there. They sent me some of these beautiful paddles. Look at this thing. Anyways, they, they, they didn't tell me to say this or anything. I just like, I just want to appreciate them because they, they're very generous with me. So yeah, amazing paddles. Go check them out. Uh, and the bow. Yeah, I still got that thing. Uh, Xander finally gave you 500 and say, says, hello. what the, whoa, somebody said, wow. Somebody gifted me $500 final. Hello. Wow. Thank you so much. That's uh, extremely generous. <laughs> Thank you. That's, um, that is, that is 
I, I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I didn't realize donations were coming in. Thank you, Final. That is extremely generous of you. Um, yeah. Wow. Um, you should come check out the Australian Outback. Yeah, it'd be incredible. I, I, I have to go. Like, I mean, if I love Ontario. Ontario is like home. Ontario has so much going for it. But yeah, I need to see more of the world. world. Any 400 mod recommendations? Honestly, like I'm probably not the guy um, to ask because I bought my truck modified already. Um, so what I like on the truck, I love the suspension kit that has been added to it. Cause it's been raised like, I don't know, six inches or eight inches. It's pretty, it's like way off the ground. And then I think the the tires have been like pushed outward. I don't know what that's called, but that's, I love it. <laughs> um, I'm not like, I'm not like much of a car guy. Like, I mean, I fixed the windshield wipers the other day, not like replaced them, but I fixed the motor and I bought some parts on eBay and I don't know, like I'm not big in it big in the cars but I, I do appreciate them gustavo shirt for the win yeah man i actually i kind of started making a gustavo shirt a long time ago but i don't know i feel like gustavo hasn't shown his face in a while maybe it's time that he uh maybe it's time that he uh, i let him back on camera you know which hiking trails would you recommend in southern ontario bruce trail hands down i was there me and uh, me and fiona were there yesterday we were hiking uh around rattlesnake and uh beautiful man if you've never been to bruce trail go hike the bruce trail there's many many sections around it's gorgeous and uh through hamilton tons of waterfalls you can not like you can go on a waterfall fall tour of hamilton and see like six waterfalls in the course of like five hours uh, uh what do you do on an average day i wake up i meditate uh, i've been doing that quite consistently for like three months now it's been very very helpful coffee ag1 um breakfast then i try to get editing but often i'll slack while i eat and then lately i've been calling people i've been like me and john had like two hour long conversations last few days um sometimes i like call my mom my brothers uh, maybe facetime my girlfriend um then I don't know, slack off a bit till I start editing. I'm usually at the gym by like 12, 1230. That's kind of like where my body's kind of dragging me out the door. It's like 1230. So I'm pretty much pretty consistent at that time. Uh, come back, eat. Then I edit till I'm bored or like until it's late. It's pretty much a daily day. Unless I'm like, you know, go play tennis with friends or something. What's your favorite fish to eat, catch, and or eat? I love catch. Okay, so my first... I was surprised. I didn't. Okay. <laughs> I always thought I caught smallmouth bass until I did this tomogamy trip. And I just started hooking into smallmouth bass for the first time. Cause most of the time in my past, it was largemouth bass, but smallmouth, they, they have a, like a different fight in them. So they've been a lot of fun uh, to catch, but walleye to eat, brookies to eat. What led you to sobriety and how did you achieve it? I was drinking too much, man. Like not just that I was using all the time, like not hard drugs, but Adderall, Vyvanse, I was smoking weed every day. I was vaping nonstop. Uh, and then I was like a bit of a poly user. Like I dabbled in MDMA and GHB and stuff. Like those are harder drugs, but I just always needed something in my life and like to, to fill voids, I suppose. I don't, I don't even, but I, but I was always in pursuit of like, you know, these, these, dopamine rushes and this like these these other things like feeling normal was abnormal for me and i always just had to be stimulated or or messed up that was that started to become normal and became so normal that it was just every every day i was constantly doing it i'd wake up first thing in the morning pop adderall you know and and then that was like hit my vape and then the adderall would start wearing off so I'd take more you know and then and then I'd be so ramped up on Adderall that I would start drinking and it was just chaos. And I, and then it just, so it was just like this balancing act, which was psychotic. It got so far that I was just unsustainable. I was like unable to continue with this balancing act that, and I, and I couldn't get out. I couldn't get out myself. I could not uh, stop myself. I was so wrapped up in it that I threw myself in a rehab and it was the best thing I ever done. Um, rehab was great. And, and the big thing for with rehab for me was just giving myself a break from myself and my habits coming out of it. I like, I immediately wanted to start, 
you know, getting right back into the habits. It was crazy. It was crazy how like quickly you just revert to wanting to do all those things that you had had habituated in the past. And I, I wanted to go right back into that. Uh, but, you know, I had my family. I didn't have to go back to work. Uh, I didn't go back to work for a while. So it was like a, like I was like nice and slow to rehab it. So my life was like pretty chill. Did a little, uh, you know, 12 step program thing. Um, that was helpful. I had a sponsor. He, he was very helpful. And, uh, and then basically like two weeks after getting out of rehab, I went right into going full time, make like, I'm just like, I'm going to pump out a video a week and that's it. You know, like I didn't expect to go full time within like a couple weeks of that, but like, I'm like, I'm going to pump out a video a week. So it came, I think it was two weeks out of rehab, maybe three weeks out of rehab. I, uh, it was like, December 30th, 2020, December 30th, 2020, I did a winter camping video. And then I think I lost my vape on New York, New Year's Eve. And I'm like, okay, I'll quit vaping too. So I had quit all the drugs and alcohol like a few weeks before. And then I quit vaping on New Year's Eve and then started posting videos come January, 2021, one, one a week. And then, you know, the first one did pretty good. And then the next one did a little better. And then the third one did a little better, like gaining subs, gaining views. And the fourth one went viral. And I turned on mon um, monetization and I was making decent money. Like I was making a couple, you know, like 60, 80 bucks a day for a little bit. And then it just went up and then I could go full time from there. <laughs> and then all you guys appreciated the content. And I'm just like, you know, full time. And I, and I, and I, I think I, talked about my story a little bit in some of the videos i think i was like two months sober i'm like i'm like i'm two months sober i did like this really goofy jig and then people in the comments were like that's amazing man i'm also sober and all this all this stuff like keep going and and while like the 12-step programs were helpful and i participated a little bit in those it was honestly the reshift in what was it it was it was finding my passion and being able to pursue it to the fullest and having a community, which was the YouTube and outdoor community. And like, that kind of like pushing me forward and finding like this purpose in life. And, and today I like, it's I'm a thousand, I celebrated a thousand days sober a few days ago, which is really cool. Um, but what, what am I saying? I celebrated a thousand days a couple days ago. And while sometimes I think about drinking, like not on a daily basis, like mostly when, you know, like friends or family are like having a couple of drinks and they're getting a little bit silly. I'm like, Oh, that'd be kind of fun, but that goes away really quick. So I'm extremely happy to be where I'm at. Um, I don't think about it very often. Um, I'm so happy to be sober. Like the thought of drinking is like gross and especially like, you know, vaping or using any kind of substance, very happy with my sobriety and, uh, and it's and anybody out there struggling, it's so so much better on the other end. It takes a minute and to like you know reform those habits and stuff, but you can do it. Just look for help, and there's lots of help out there. You don't have to do it on your own. How many siblings are there? I have three brothers. I'm the second oldest. Max is the oldest. Read this. You are awesome. Thank you. Sorry, I can't get to all these questions. There's a lot, and I keep on rambling. What are your thoughts on Found Ponds videos? Oh, I think they're great. Hey, found ponds. <laughs> I can see it. Yeah, keep it up, man. It's nice to have, uh, you know, like a fan fan made uh, YouTube channel. And if if you guys don't know, found ponds um, makes fan made YouTube videos of John, mine, and Maxim's content, and it takes like the little funny clips from from our stuff. Uh, your girlfriend is from the Philippines, right? Yeah, Fiona's from the Philippines. Going back to Starbase for IFT2 next weekend? No, I'm not going back to Starbase. Uh, it's like, that's like a 35 hour drive for me to get back to Texas. And uh, yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was always a goal of mine and a dream of mine to uh, go watch a space launch. So when I was in Utah and I like ripped down to go watch Starship and it actually took off, like that was one of the coolest things I've ever done. And it was so exciting. If you guys ever get a chance, go down to Boca Chica and uh, Sam south padre island and go watch a space launch go hang out like south padre is like kind of like a grungier miami beach like it's chiller like it's it's really cool it's really relaxing it's like southern southern most point in the u.s the continental u.s i think right further south than florida beautiful warm comfortable i mean at least when i was there apparently it gets really hot 
but uh yeah go go check out a space launch it's totally a thing um what's the worst meal you've made on a trip oh man any of my survival videos where i'm eating lichen or just like plain fish that i barely cook or any 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 survival video meal it's the worst meal that i've ever cooked uh, survival video, you versus Max, who will last longer? Uh, <laughs> Max will, uh, Max will die of hangriness within the first couple hours. Max suffers from a condition called extreme hangriness where he gets really hungry and, uh, his brain shuts off and he, uh, it's not a real condition. He just gets really hangry and, uh, and he, he just has to stop everything until he gets a little bit of food in him. Maybe he's diabetic. I don't know. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so you've never taken a lichen to lichen. That's funny. Uh, no, maybe with a little bit of uh, seasoning. Have you ever thought about starting a TV show? Not really. I feel like new media, like old media is kind of going, it's kind of in the past, man. YouTube is where it's at. Like YouTube is really the future. I, like, like uh, YouTube is, I'm pretty sure more people are watching YouTube on TV nowadays than TV shows. I feel like self-production is kind of where it is. I thought recently about what my future is in this niche and what like, what, like I, I had like a thought experiment of what, where I play a role in something like larger than just a channel for myself. Maybe that includes, you know, like a community of creators doing some sort of, cumulative content like community content um and i don't know what that looks like yet but it's just a thought i don't really know somebody asked about skin skin routine i, I don't really have one no i just i don't know eat healthy exercise shower sometimes i don't even wash my face like wash it with water you know dirt when i'm in the woods just rub some dirt in your skin wash it off with like water no i don't do that i don't really do anything um, Ben Bouchamp, love you, buddy. If you guys don't know who Ben uh, Bouchamp is, go check him out. He makes videos. He's also from Ontario. Um, he's awesome, up and coming, young star. Go, uh, go subscribe. Uh, who has inspired you in your life? You have, my friend. You are my inspiration. No, but in all honesty, Ben Ben makes great videos. Go check him out, and uh, it's always fun to see uh, new new guys um, pumping out like great content, uh, young guy from, from Ontario who's inspired you. I mean, in the niche, uh, the Baird brothers for sure. Clay, some of the guys that are like, like really in it, like really in it. They're like so enthused with the outdoors and just a wealth of knowledge. <sighs> Who else? Hmm. Max would know the name of this guy. Who's that guy from that travel show? Um, Lonely Planet. There's this British guy, like shorter, funny British guy. He does. He always like had this like charming way about him when he uh, when he uh, did bits for for the countries he was visiting. And I think I bring a lot of that to uh, Ian. I think it's Ian. Max is gonna say his name. Ian Wright. Yeah, Ian Wright from uh, Lonely Planet. The guy was just so charming and funny, and he. Uh, he just had this way that of making you just like like continue to watch the content because he did these funny little bits as he uh, traveled these countries. And Lonely Planet was a, a show Max and I used to watch when we were younger. Was, I'm sure a lot of you guys know, know Ian, right? And of course, Jonathan Kelly. He's my uh, my biggest hero. <laughs> Come to Nova Scotia and do a vid with Northern Scavengers. Actually, so yes, that'd be that'd be amazing. Unfortunately, uh, I, I won't be able to make it out. I won't be able to make it out this uh uh no actually invited me to come sea kayaking in the, the fall and I, I won't be able to make it out due to other plans and uh and uh and obligations so uh, unfortunately it won't be happening this year uh do i rock climb yes i love rock climbing i haven't been going as much me and my buddy mark are probably going like just bouldering in a couple of days but yeah i've been i love rock climbing i uh, haven't done much outdoors in years but um but i love rock climbing do I know Adam Schultz? No, I don't. But I have his book. One of his books. John recommended this one. So I'll be reading History of Canada and 10 Maps. Uh, Canadian canoeist legends. 
Um, yeah. I don't make videos, but I do take a lot of wilderness photography, but I'm lazy to post it. Okay. Is that a question? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, just post it. If, uh, if you should just don't be lazy. I, I find like, so it, it, it's hard to break. So if you're like wondering about like, you know, posting content or like being a creator yourself, you got, you got to learn a lot in order to do those things and to, you know, from filming to editing to, you know, figure, even just figuring out a trip and then to figure out how to post it. And it, it takes a while to learn all these things, but it's worth it in the end. If you actually want to be a creator, uh, it takes a while, but just keep, keep plucking away. Each time you learn something new, every time I learn something new, I'm learning new things about editing each time I do it. You know, every time I go out in the woods, I'm learning it like one or two new, new plants or one or two new trees or Sometimes nothing, but then the thing I learned that time is that I don't know shit, you know, and I need to do more research. So, uh, 10 bucks for a new cutting board. Thank you, Amber. Um, I will, I will get a new cutting board. Every time I get a new cutting board, it just dirties up in, in no time. So uh, I appreciate it though. I get, that's a funny, funny joke because everybody's always asked me to get a new cutting board because they're always disgusting. I'm sorry. Did you, did you ever end up catching a lake trout with your knife? Yes. That's in the, the, the unseen footage. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I almost drowned though. No, I'm kidding. What are some decent, cheap sleeping mats or sleeping bags? Ooh, cheap. Hmm. So I don't know. Yeah. So sleep. Okay. So sleeping, watch Justin outdoors. He does a good job of diving into those things. I'm pretty sure the, there's like an REI sleeping mat, which he rates as like the highest of like all around. It's like 150 bucks, like REI Helix. I, I don't even know the name of the sleeping mat for sleeping bags. I wouldn't sting out on sleeping bags. I'd buy a down filled warm sleeping bag because getting crappy sleep in the woods is just a no, no for me. I've done that when I was younger, you know, you go into the woods with like a crap sleeping bag and no sleeping mat kind of don't like back then. I didn't even know that, that you would lose heat to the ground right? So you just sleep right on the ground, use your sleeping, uh, use your life jacket as a pillow and just lose all your heat in the night, not get a wink of sleep, but you're a kid. So you're resilient. You can just run around all day the next day. But now it's like, I, I if I don't get great sleep, it's like the next day is like I'm not operating at hundred percent. So I wouldn't sting out on sleeping bags, uh, or sleeping pads, but there are cheap alternatives. Definitely get something down cause you can stuff it away and pack it away. Uh, there's an RAI sleeping pad. That's, that's all I really know. Do I know Mav? No, I don't. Uh, we're kind of like, although we're all camp, you know, even like uh, Steve Wallace, he camps, Mav camps. It's all kind of different camping. But uh, no, I appreciate their content. They do amazing things and they're uh, amazing creators. So yeah, yeah, Yan Little. Hey, I live near you. Would you ever share locations when you go to random lakes down logging roads? Hmm. I, so that's the problem with having a larger audience is like, as much as I would love to help and share places that I go, um, it's kind of, it's really hard because like when hundreds of thousands of people watch the video and like, say like 15,000 of those people live in Ontario and all those people are within, you know, probably can you camp or enjoy it. Uh, when you share like a lake, it, it just, it doesn't do anything but bring too much attention to that place. And um, yeah, I, I don't think so. Like, I don't think I, I, I can, you know, I know some people, they point out like, Oh, that was this in this lake, you know, cause they're like local and they know that place. And if I bump into somebody on the lake, which happens occasionally, they're like, Oh, they're like being recognized as well. Like recently I was recognized on a lake and, uh, and the, the guy, uh, actually, well, his name was Lloyd. Great guy awesome guy. We had a nice little chat and actually quite a few chats. He, uh, he, he was a little bit worried that I was going to, you know, talk about the location in my videos and I reassured him that I wasn't cause it's a special place for him and as it is for other people. So, uh, yeah, just, you gotta, I'm happy. Yeah. It's, it's not something I'm really going to share often. And, and, and I do occasionally like this next video I put out, uh, I, I do a breakdown of where I am on the map and I did for Philip Edward islands 
my Wabakimi one, I will not be because I was asked by the outfitters not to share uh, where I go. So, uh, Connor asks, do you have any tips for journaling? You're a great man. Love the channel. Okay. So I journal some days daily. Other times I go weeks without it. Hmm. For me, it's like, if I'm, it's a really a bit of everything, man. If something inspires you, write it down. If you want to write a list, write it down. If you're having trouble with something, write it down. If you want to keep a log of your trip, just write it in there. You know, often I don't even reflect on it. Sometimes I do. And I'm always happy when I like poke back my head or poke back my eyes and, and uh, see what Xander was like a couple weeks ago and how far I've come. Actually, that is quite helpful. Um, I don't know. Sometimes it's just like nice to get things out. I guess my biggest advice for you is just start one and don't worry about making it too perfect because if you try to keep it perfect, like you're not going to want to mess it up. You know, it's like a brand new car. You don't want to get that first scratch on it. Put that first scratch on it. Like your, your, like your brand new canoe. You don't want to get that scratch on it. Put that first scratch on it so it becomes usable. You know, so I just start like my, my journal and I start a new journal. I'm just like, I just like fart in it, you know, just diarrhea. It's like, just get into it. Just start and uh, don't be too perfect with it. How do you pick where to go? Um, so it depends. Like if I'm looking for like a place to do a survival video and like Crownland camp, that is a mix between using the Crownland Use Policy Atlas on online and iHunter, which is an app which you'd have to buy the subscription for the Crownland. And then I cross-reference those two with Google Earth to find entrance points. And it takes a lot of time, but there are I actually there's like some great videos on YouTube on how to find crown land spots. The other is just, you know, watching people on YouTube and seeing what trips they're going on and what parks they're going to, and then looking up those parks and then planning routes. And then also my CCR, I just used that the other day to get some trip ideas. And that's how I'm going to be doing my Wabakimi trip. Um, so yeah those three or just talking to people, you know, or just taking other people's routes, you know, the, the, my tomogamy route, I want to do Lady Evelyn. And then uh, I couldn't figure out the route that I want. I want to do a through route of Lady Evelyn, but it was going to be 500 bucks for the shuttle. Cause it was like a four hour shuttle. And then, so I just took Keenan from canoe the North's route where he came in from the South on Lake tomogamy and came up. And then I also added Maple mountain to it. And, uh, Bada bing, bada boom. Adventure ad, adventure lad. How's it going, man? Uh, asks your first Q and A. I was just starting out as a creator, and I asked you what your one single piece of advice would be to someone just starting out. You said, "Take your time." Two years later, best advice. Hey, good stuff, man. Yeah, man. Like, if, yeah, like for me, like to get to my starting point, which is I'd say 2021, when I was actually like starting to like make consistent content it took me many 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 years to like learn how to edit learn how to film figuring out photography for, figure out filming figuring out myself as like a, as like a, as like a person you know figuring out who i was and who i wanted to present myself as i made a few videos in the past of like me doing like a casey neistat type dealio because that's what was popular at the time. You know, I spent a lot of time making these videos with like these crazy animations, which wasted months and amounted to nothing. Um, take your time. Yeah. If you really want to do it, you'll get there. You know, just, just, you know, learn a little bit over here, learn a little bit over there and uh, eventually just, you know, slowly cumulatively apply it all. Did you ever go and not film it's kind of hard not to film sometimes like on this last trip i did with fiona um i told her i'm like i'm just gonna film on the gopro and uh we'll use it for footage later and i just did like a quick little intro and then i filmed a little bit here and there and then uh and the next thing you know we got like kind of a video not much b-roll but it was like kind of a fun moment between us which i'll, I'll probably share later um okay how did you secure the Arcteric sponsorship? Oh, they just reached out to me. It's not a sponsorship. I'm just an ambassador for a, a um, for the Toronto store, one of the Toronto stores. So just hooking me up with gear and uh, just gotta like tag them a little bit. It's pretty chill. 
Yeah, but they reached out to me, which is which is amazing, right? <laughs> it's so cool. Uh, what's the best way to work with brands? Um, we'll figure out which brands that you like you re re resonate with. Yeah, basically, it's like and how you can make how you can add value to them. Really, you know, for me, it's like I have great exposure. I'm in a in a, I'm in a very specific niche, which is like outdoor adventures. So brands that want to work with me. Also, the other brands, like the sponsored videos I'm going to be doing in the future, um, I, I personally use, like Athletic Greens for nutritional supplements. Uh, and then there's two others that I'm, I'm working stuff out with, but these are things that I use personally. And, and I, I don't mind, you know, sharing and talking about. So what am I drinking? I'm drinking uh, bubbly with... Uh, 40 proof vodka. No, it's just bubbly. I don't drink vodka anymore. Uh, yeah, I love bubbly. I'm, I'm on the sparkling waters hardcore. And bubbly came out with like a coconut pineapple one. And it was like limited time. And I bought two boxes and they were sold out. And like, bubbly makes grapefruit flavored bubbly, but they don't make coconut. Something up, man. I need to talk to those people. I, I, met, I, I DM'd bubbly the other day. I was like, you guys need to get coconut bubbly going. And they just never got back to me. Actually, they blocked me. I was harassing them. I'm joking. Um, it's tough to balance enjoying outdoor trips and creating content as your job. No, no. I, I mean, I, I feel like I live a pretty, pretty fortunate life. Um, no, I, I like, I'm, I feel like I have a very, I'm very lucky that I'm not pigeonholed either. I feel like if I had to, if I had to do survival videos, every single video, I think I would get bored and I would, I would burn out. Um, cause it's rough. It's rough kind of not eating well for five days. It's rough freezing your butt off or getting eaten by mosquitoes for a night. Like even one night of, you know, one sleepless night in the cold, it, 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 it's, it, it's uncomfortable and it wears on you. Um, so for me, being able to switch it up, do like longer trips, survival videos, shorter trip with cooking, you know, that's kind of like the three, you know, types of videos I make. I do like a short cooking trip, which is usually like fall and spring when I do shorter trips, you know, survival videos. And then I do like longer canoe camping trips. That's kind of like the three that I like to do. And and between those, no, man, I, I absolutely love what I do. And I'm super, super duper uh, blessed and grateful that I can do this for a full-time job. Do you ever get tired of going back to the camera when you are doing those shots? Eh, no, you know, it's like, you just, I find I had like every time I want to do, I see a shot, I might have like a mental battle with myself or at least I used to, I used to have a mental battle. It's like, Oh, that'd be a great shot. That'd be an awesome shot. But like, fuck, I'm lazy. Like, I don't, oh, I don't really feel like doing that. And then like, and then I know that if I don't do it, I'm going to be like, oh, I really should have done that shot. So now I don't play that mental gymnastics as much. I just do it. And uh, the last time that came up, that mental gymnastics was on my very last outro shot of my next video where I put the camera up on a mountain, like this big hill, which took me like, like 12, 15 minutes to climb just to place the camera to come down to canoe away to come back. It was a 30 minute video of me just you know, just to go up to, to start the camera up the hill. I had to climb the hill, start the camera, come down, do the canoe, climb back up, stop the camera. It was 30 minutes and then came back down canoeing up. So that was like a little like, I'm like, oh, should I do it? And then it was like, but Xander, you're going to love the footage and people are going to be like, Zong, wow, that's, I love Xander's videos because he always puts all this effort in. And I'll be like, oh, thanks, guys. So I, I ended up doing it. Anyways, no, uh, no, it's just part of the job. You know, actually, well, I did also enjoy just hand bombing my GoPro with uh, my girlfriend on our last trip. And I might do more videos like that. How old am I? I'm 33. You should do more ice fishing during winter camping. I should. You know, I, I think I would do more ice fishing with somebody who's more experienced. Maybe I'll go with Adam Stu again because he's a good ice fisherman. Um, every time I go ice fishing solo, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to just sit there and, and ice fish. I'll, I'll do I'll do some more. Maybe I'll do some more like post up winter hot tent trips. I'll definitely do that. You're right. I'll do it. I'm going to catch a fat one and a, and a huge redemption on like the the fish that my little brother uh, bonked and then I lost in the hole, you know, got to do that. 
do you get your ideas for the funny clips you make like when you went to do El Diablo and you shook some maracas and whispered El Diablo into the camera? Too funny. Oh, where do I get the ideas? I don't know, man. They just kind of come to you, you know? Maybe like seeing like silly, I don't know, like you get them from everywhere. Like you're, you're a collection of your influences and what you surround yourself with. So if you, you know, watch funny things or hear funny things or just, you know, keep a, like a funny, positive attitude, you just silliness comes to you. I don't know. I don't know where that came from. Just seemed like a good idea. I think my brother told me to use maracas. You know, it, it's just like they, they, they just build up. You know, you tell somebody a funny idea. I think it was probably my brother to use maracas, but I just, I wanted to do the El Diablo thing. And Max is like, yeah, you should use maracas. And so I got some Amazon maracas and they're actually over there in the corner, which they have been for, I don't know, over a year. They're just in the corner now. I need to give me a reason to bring back out the maracas. Am I a Leafs fan? Definitely not. I think Leafs are um, just, they just break hearts. You know, every time I kind of like, I'm like, oh, the Leafs are doing well. And then I like, you know, put my ear in and I was like, hmm, maybe. And then they're just like, no, Leafs lose seven to nothing. And I was like, yeah, well, okay. You know, if they're, if they, if they're in game seven of the, the Stanley cup playoffs, um, our finals, I will bandwagon hard. How do you get into this stuff? How do you get into this stuff? You start, man, you start slow, you know, you just go for a hike, you know, start acquiring hiking gear. You know, I'm kind of like outfitting my girlfriend. you know, she got hiking boots and I got her a sun shirt and she's boring gear and, uh, you know, just starting buying things to do day trips and then. You know, if you want to do a big trip, you can always use an outfitter. It's going to cost money, but, you know, you just start and you do it slow over time and you're going to accumulate the gear. Start with, you know, the basics, you know, the stuff that you need on your body and then like a tent and a sleep, a good sleeping bag and a good sleeping pad is probably better than a tent. And then you can do like a tarp. If you're on the, if you're on the side seasons, like that's kind of how I started. I was doing... I did a winter camping trip because I didn't own a tent and it was like, I just used a tarp, you know, I had a good sleeping bag. Um, and then I used those foam corrugated sleeping pads and a tarp and that was all I needed. You know, you can use like a lighter and crappy sweat slush pants and, you know, you can get a decent pair of rubber boots with insulation from Walmart for 40 bucks. I used those for quite a while, you know, then maybe snowshoes, but you don't need to do a snowshoe trip. And then eventually your gear kind of, swaps out and you get better stuff but you can you can do stuff for pretty cheap um just just start man start accumulating things go for day hikes and then uh try to try to accumulate gear over time any pets in or no okay let me let me get back up here sorry if i'm missing all these questions it's uh it's hard to follow along this chat you should go on alone i don't have any plans to go on the show alone um I think that my knowledge of, although like I'm gaining skills over the years and, and I'm, I'm pushing myself as like an outdoorsman and, and maybe even a survivalist, um, I think that I don't really have much benefit going on the show alone other than for it to be just a self challenge. I think the monetary value, the monetary incentive is not great enough for me to to like, and I, and I also don't think I can beat some of these guys who are like hunters and like true, true outdoorsmen. I don't know. I like my, my thoughts are that the time that it takes that I take away from what I'm doing right now is too great. I don't necessarily know if I would have a chance of winning, you know, I'd push it as hard as I could. I think that also like that starvation side might take too much away from my health. Um, and, and it could also potentially be bad publicity for myself. Say I stub my toe on the first day and I get an infection. I have to get helicoptered out. Then, you know, everybody's laughing at poor Xander and his, and his stinky, uh, stinky stub toe, you know? So, um, <laughs> maybe in the future, but, uh, for now I'm pretty happy, uh, just doing my own kind of survival challenges and stuff. I, I do admire everybody on alone. I watch it. Uh, I watch all the seasons. Um, have you thought about any longer trips like doing the PCT or Appalachian Trail? I haven't thought much about that. Those longer trips would be amazing. As for content, I don't know how well those would play because uh, as a YouTuber, you always think about um, the types of content you make, like how what you the trip that you're doing could fit as like content. 
And uh, often I'll like go out in the rain intentionally because it makes better content or I won't bring food because it makes better content or I'll do a certain length of trip because it makes better content. But doing like extremely long trips, I don't know necessarily how well those work out. Mind you, I am doing a 14, I'm aiming for a 14 day trip as my next trip. And uh, me and John were just talking about that today because, uh, you know, and I was talking about the, the beginning of the, uh, the, the live stream is when I was doing like weekly videos, my channel growth was very rapid, but now I'm doing longer videos and they're more spaced out. The growth is a lot slower. So to do like, a, I don't know, how long is the PCT or even the Appalachian Trail, the months, right? Um, maybe something in the future, you know, like I'm not close to it. Do you have another job beside YouTuber? Um, I'm a professional pole dancer. Um, Sandra, congrats on 600K. Thank you for the amazing content. You're an inspiration. By the way, tell Gustavo his hard work is paying off. I will tell him he's uh, locked up in the in the back shed there. I gave him some scraps earlier. So I'll tell him in a week when I feed him. Hey, Xander, would you consider an international camping trip? Uh, to Yeah, I mean, I would travel internationally. There's a lot of places in the world that I would love to go. Do -do. How is John from Lost Lakes doing surgery recovery? He sounds like he's doing great. It sounds like he's doing really, really good. Like compared to, it's a, like, yeah, yeah, he's doing good. And uh, you could tell in his, like, like his, his, you know, when around the time of his injury, when he was off, you could just sense that, like, he wanted to be, um, he wanted to be out doing things. And now, like, he's back from a big trip. We've been chatting. He's in good spirits. And, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't even bring it up. I had to, like, we had, like, a one minute, a one hour conversation. And then I had to call him back. I'm like, oh, yeah, how's your knee? I forgot. You know, bad friend. But, you know, he didn't even, like, it just, didn't seem like anything and he's going he's working out and uh he's doing recovery things going to physio you know and if you guys like feel like you have any injuries um or any pains and sprains like I, i've done physio in the past and it's uh it's more than beneficial to like you know prevent injuries in the future and also give you peace of mind hmm. how do you handle outdoor pests like ticks uh fortunately i don't encounter ticks very often. I hear that some parks in Southern Ontario are experiencing ticks. Uh, ben Beauchamp can test to that. He's, he had some ticks in one of his videos. Um, for ticks, I hear permethrin is like the go-to. You just douse your clothing in permethrin. I haven't found clothing-based permethrin. At the, at the, I was going to I was looking for permethrin at the Canadian Tire, but like the permethrin that they had was, it's a do not put on clothing. And I don't, it was, yes, yeah, so I just didn't want to buy it. I got to get some permethrin. Um, Cause it's an insecticide. You douse your clothing in it, let it dry. And then when the bugs crawl on it, they just die, which is nuts. So I don't know how good that is for your skin. Uh, do you play pickleball? No, I play tennis though. Me and uh, Fiona play tennis. What sort of music do you listen to? I listen to all types of things. Lately, I've been listening to Sublime, a lot of Sublime, and then uh, like, who who was it? I don't know. It, it goes all over the place. Less, lately, I've been like trying to listen to, like more upbeat, fun stuff from like the '90s. Um, Sugar Ray <laughs> and uh, and Sublime have been like quite often uh, played when I'm blasting music, but I listen to podcasts often, you know. Uh, did you start this stoic influenced? Why did you start this stoic influenced? Why did I start what? What am I starting? I don't know how to answer that question. Speaking of stoicism. I also have meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Found Pond, Blink-182. Yeah, I used to listen. To, I used to be obsessed with Blink-182 back in the day. Um, when I was a young lad, don't doesn't don't resonate much with it anymore. But you still have it. what podcast do you listen to? My go to is uh, Colin and Samir. They do a YouTube and creator based podcast. And anybody looking to like be a creator, Colin and Samir, heads down best. I got John into it. He loves it. And I also like eh, if Joe Rogan's listening to something interesting. Sure, I'll I'll, I'll listen to him. Um, who else? Universe Today, Fraser Kane. I uh, love Fraser Kane. He does like space and astronomy. That's pretty much it. 
mostly Colin and Smear, Fraser Kane, sometimes Joe or, or Lex Friedman. He uh, interviews some really interesting. Guys. Do I play video games? I don't anymore. Uh, actually, so I haven't played video games in like three years. And then Polybridge three came out, and I played it for like I don't know twenty minutes. I love Polybridge, <laughs> but no. Uh, have you thought about camping in Asian countries? Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, like I would love to. I would love to go climb in the Himalayas, you know, do like a mountaineering thing. How's Arcteryx? Great, chill, very chill. They're uh, like nice to work with. Is it legal to camp almost anywhere freely? Because in Portugal, you can't camp in nature. If sappers found you, you will get a ticket. Uh, no, there are, there's lots of private land, park land, different types of designated areas here in Ontario where you can't camp. But the further north you get, the less private land and designated land there is. And then there's just crown land. And crown land you can park on. But the problem with crown land is it doesn't always have the best access the best access goes to parks and places that actually make money. So you have to find crown land using certain mapping software. And um, yeah, that's like, if I'm doing certain types of camping trips or I can camp freely, that's on crown land. Then there's also park land, which uh, usually you have to camp at designated park uh, campsites. How many languages do you speak? I speak English only, sadly. I'm uh, yeah, that's it. Have you ever, ever worn wigs? Will you wear wigs? Have I have I ever worn a wig? And uh, will I ever wear wigs? I only wear wigs when I'm cross-dressing at home, but that's just for uh, for myself. Uh, how to pack meat when packing? Uh, depends on the temperature. Um, if it's if it's like fall or you know if like okay your temperature is like four degrees Celsius. Um, so if you're camping around at the temperatures which are like four degrees celsius or colder or even like up to like 10 degrees 12 degrees like just bring meat you know just bring food you know maybe it gives off more odor um keep it in your food barrel but you can just bring meat out um if you're going out in warm temperature then you know things are gonna go bad quicker but i'll bring you know more smoked meats like salami and sausages those tend to last for a pretty long time like weeks i'd, I'd leave um or just even sausages like a night maybe two um just look at the temperature certain meats don't spoil as quick and if, if it's warm out just you know one day is good do i worry about being killed by a bear out in the middle of nowhere no no bears are scared of you bears only want your food if the bear's trained if the bears if you're like an algonquin or like uh popular campgrounds where bears are used to being fed by human garbage. They just want humans garbage. They just want humans food. They're not after you. If you're in the middle of the woods, bears are like any other animal and they get a whiff of you and they're gone. They're scared. You know, bears have killed, black bears have killed one person every two years for the last 120 years. It's like, I think it's like 69 people in all of North America have died from black bears in the last 120 years. So no, statistically, no, I'm more afraid of moose um, during like the fall, say I'd, I'd be much more scared of moose. Best summer footwear, uh, Crocs, man. Yeah, just Crocs. Like I have these like Tevas. Um, they have like holes in them and these are pretty nice, but the holes, just collect, collect rocks, and then you're just walking on rocks all day. And then stubbornly, you're like, oh, I'll just walk another couple kilometers. And then you finally like, okay, fine, I'll take the rocks out. And then you're like, oh, I should have done that hours ago. Um, Crocs are amazing. I'll wear those almost like the whole time until like, ugh, I don't know. Crocs, if I'm not portaging. These things are pretty good, but they're not perfect. I don't know how I feel about the holes. But yeah, water shoes. Which bug is worse, a deer fly or a mosquito? Uh, mosquito. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Depend like one of them. It's just one of them, a deer fly. Xander Bander. Hey, do you bring a weapon on your camping trip? No, nah, just my guns. 
Okay, sorry. Yeah, no, I don't know. Croc Gang, yeah. Channel. Ghetto Gourmet. <laughs> uh, Tiva is actually pronounced Tave. <laughs> You're welcome. Would you ever do go on alone? I already answered that question. The answer is probably not. If it will, would, it would be not for a while. Hey, so we've been doing this for an hour and 10 minutes. I'm curious, where you guys at? You guys want me to keep answering questions? Um, last, I think my first one I did like two hours. My last one I did like an hour and a half. I'm good to keep going. Um, yeah. Okay, we got three yeses. So I guess that's a yes. So if somebody says no, I'm just going to sign right up. No, turn, turn your camera off now. End this live stream. <laughs> Wrap it up, man. Wrap it up. We've been here an hour. It's garbage. <laughs> Please stop. There you go. <laughs> Please stop for the love of God. <laughs> Why don't you ever? Okay, we're going to go for a bit. Yeah, okay. We'll go until I like pass out. People say all nighter. Here we go. Just answering questions. Okay. Get a dog. Okay. Why don't you ever hammock? Uh, okay. I've, the, the hammock that John reps, like I got one too. Uh, love it. Probably the most comfy sleep you can have out in the woods. Um, it is. It's the, I've had the best sleep I've ever had sleeping in the hammock. It has its limitations though. Hardcore weather. Uh, it's not that great. It's not the best. Like you're kind of exposed on the sides there. Like John's pretty good with dealing with that. Uh, but in a tent, you can just have your spread, which I really like. It's nice, nice and closed. Um, and I don't know. Maybe I got to bring the hammock out more. It's really great. The hammocks are incredible. Max says he has 20 minutes. Yeah, you guys can leave whenever you want. You guys aren't obligated to stay. Uh, my, I'm talking to my brothers here. They're, uh, um, I, uh, I told them to come here and moderate you guys because you guys can fear to start blowing me up and saying profanity. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm joking, by the way. I don't care. They're just uh, here to help. <clears throat> Is there a weight limit on the AMUC? I'm 265 pounds. Nah, you're probably good, man. Uh, you sneak out. Uh, do I sneak out after Papa John goes to bed to forge blueberries? Mm, yes. <laughs> Best Ontario campsite. Uh Oh man, honestly, every campsite that I go to, I'm always like, this is the best campsite I've ever been to. And then I go to another one. I'm like, wow, this is the best campsite I've ever been to. Being about camp camping is that like the brain kind of craves novelty and then every single campsite's different and they're just all beautiful in their own way. So I don't know. Try $100 camping. Yeah, maybe. Eh? Xander, my husband loves you. Give him a shout out. Uh, who's your husband? Shout out. Shout out to Marley Mikotowick. That's been <laughs> kind of backpack to use. I just have Gregory backpacks and they're good. Uh, would you ever go on the show alone? I already answered that. Um, how much do you pay Gustavo? I, I don't pay him. Hi, Xander. Do you have any plans to come down to the States on an adventure? Yeah, I might be coming back down to hang out with Clay. I was there for, okay, the complicated thing about the States, and actually I wanted to talk about this, is when I did the truck camping series, I had eight videos planned. I had, not planned, nothing was planned. There was very little planned. It was pretty much, we wanted to check out the Grand Canyon, and we, we wanted to do a pack rafting trip, Max and I, and as well as doing some things with uh, my brothers, there's a lot of complications to get, get it around getting filming permits because any forest there, any national forest, national park, you require filming permits if you're a YouTuber or do any kind of monetization. Even if I were to post a video that I filmed in a national forest or national park on YouTube and I didn't monetize it, because YouTube puts ads on those videos, you're required to get a film permit to film at those locations. Actually, you don't, you're not, you don't even need to, you don't even need to film. Okay. The thing is too, you don't need a film permit to film at those locations. You could film at those locations. No problem. It's when you post, it becomes illegal without having a permit. So we didn't fully know all of that. So when we went down there, me and Max filmed in Sedona and we, we filmed all these, like this, like I filmed like two weeks worth of content. I filmed like a week in Sedona. I did a whole hiking thing. And then I did a truck camping thing. And it was really great. Um, and then tried to get permits for that and couldn't. And, um, that was really complicated. I, I chatted with the guy about that. That was really complicated. 
Um, and then same thing was for Grand Canyon. I filmed the whole thing in the Grand Canyon. It was an amazing trip. Filmed the whole thing in the Grand Canyon. And we were unable to get permits for that. We didn't have permits for it and we couldn't get them in retrospect. So unable to post. So those two videos gone. So that's why my truck camping series jumps from me going to Sedona to kind of like me going down to Mexico. And then everywhere else we filmed were in, uh, what is the name of the places? Uh, uh, do, do, do. What are those places called, Max? Um, anyways, it's kind of like the crown land of the U.S. So that's where we ended up. Uh, camping, yeah, BLM. Thank you, Bobby. BLM land. Yeah. So lots of BLM land. Um, yeah. So if I were to post, because I'm a big creator and I have a name, like if I posted a Grand Canyon video without having had a permit, even though I've already filmed it, even though it was like non-intrusive, even though I didn't go out of bounds, everything was like to the book and stuff, because I didn't have permits to do that. Uh, if I were to post on YouTube, uh, you can get fine or even jail time. And some people actually get in trouble so much that they're not allowed to go back into the States. And for me, it's like not even worth it. Like, of course, I'd love to share with you guys that. But until they change those like crazy rules, I don't know how I feel about filming in a lot of the places in the States. Next time I go down to the States, it's going to be BLM, obviously, because the States are amazing. There's so much good shit there. Okay. What else we got? Andrew Hare. Thank you, Xander. Thank you, Andrew. Oh, no. Max is just talking. Somewhere. Anyways. Ty asks, which brother is your favorite brother? Benjamin, of course. Ben is my favorite brother, hands down. The other two are uh, forgettable and yeah, don't 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 care about them much. I'm just kidding. I love all my brothers equally. Thank you for your amazing content. Axe or Saw? Uh, saw, man. Like, if you, yeah, like I, I have so much more use for a saw than an axe. I use an axe in the winter to make splits for my wood stove if i'm camping anywhere outdoors i never use an axe i never make splits you don't need to you know like you only make splits when you're processing wood like this large rarely are you where rarely do you need to process wood this large unless you're winter camping and putting stuff in a wood stove and that's the only time you split it then again it holds other purposes like like um you know knocking up branches and and uh you know like making tools and stuff but if you're camping for the first time definitely a saw you know i i personally bought an axe when i first got into camping because it's more fun but i have six or seven saws and i have one axe now two axes i got that new agawa axe i'm sure some of you guys saw it. it's like that cool axe i'll, I'll plug them where's it at yeah, I like the guys over at Agawa. They uh, came out with this new axe. I'm sure some of you guys have seen it. It's like a hatchet. We got a Kickstarter campaign. I'll link it below. Got this uh, the hatchet, and it connects to this axe. It connects to this handle, and that's a full axe. Pretty cool. It's like actually like this. This connection here is solid. Like it's really really solid. So. Um, yeah, it's a pretty cool thing because like often you're like, do I need an axe? Do I need a hatchet? And that's the compromise and it's a good one. So I'm looking forward to taking that out. But overall, saw first, axe if you really need it. Or if you just want to like, you know, get a really sweet scar on your shin, then you go with an axe because most amateurs are likely to axe themselves. Axes are dangerous as heck, man. So many people have injured themselves. Like they're so dangerous. Most people I hear from that have got injured camping other than like maybe a fall or scrape or something. Axe, axe themselves right in the shin so easy anyways have you ever been to hawaii yes when i was a kid my mom and dad took me and my brothers on a camping trip not, oh, not a camping trip on a vacation to hawaii twice and i have fond memories of the place and i would love to go back and um definitely will go back like i i, I think about that place often ah, how do you find crown land how do you find if it's crown land or not not the crown land use policy atlas or the i hunter app with the crown land subscription there's lots of videos on youtube that can guide you on how to find crown land for camping lots of them just google it my god love the mullet let it grow yeah it's kind of it's kind of getting there you know how far away can you fly drones uh i don't know like a few kilometers what drone do you have i have dji mini 2 it was the same one that I dumped in the lake. Um, 
it's still working. I want to get the three or maybe even the pro or something. What is the average amount of video storage you go through per video and how do you manage it? <laughs> um, so I did a seven day trip and it's a terabyte, almost exactly a terabyte. Lots of just like dumb footage of, you know, I, I shot 30 minutes of one boating away scene, a 4K footage, which I'm going to use 10 seconds of, right? And I'm stubborn and lazy, so I'm not like cropping that, cutting that little bit of footage from the 30 minutes and exporting that and then deleting the original. I'm just like, like I just, look, I can't be bothered. So uh, how do I manage all that? I have, what do I got on this computer? This computer is a beast. Um, I have to have like a desktop to edit because I'm not editing on on laptops. I can't I can't bother to be to edit on laptops. My screen, my monitor is 36 inches, and it allows me to edit really, really, really well. And my computer is extremely powerful. It has 32 cores, I think, and 128 gigabytes of RAM, as well as three solid state drives, two two of which are two terabytes. One is one terabyte. And then maybe like 16 gigabytes of internal storage. And then I have, God, external hard drives at the yin yang. Like, like just external hard drives at the yin yang. And one of these is like, this is like 2020, this is 2022, five to seven. So that's January, February, March, April, May, July, May to July is, uh, four terabytes. It's just, it's just, I'm not doing it right. But this is what we're doing. <laughs> lots of lots. And then the problem is too, is like, I try to do these like recaps. I'm like, Oh yeah, this reminds like I'm doing it, filming a video. I'm like, Oh yeah. Like, yeah, this reminds me of the time that I caught that muskie, you know? And then I try to show that clip of that muskie maybe. And then I have to go back and like find where it is on all these. And I can't have them all plugged in at once. Cause like, I don't know. It's all messy. Anyways, I'm looking for a good solution to be able to plug in all these uh, SanDisk or whatever these things are all at once so I can just access all the files all at once because uh, eh, I'm trying to like streamline everything. Uh, 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 uh. How do you tolerate flies and mosquitoes? Anything you can buy that genuinely repels them? Other than DEET and bug nets, the thermocell is incredible. It doesn't work for everything, but for mosquitoes, when they're coming in in droves, in good, like, in good moderate, like, wind levels, like, when the wind levels are low, it works incredible. The thermocell is amazing, and it does well for certain things. It doesn't do things, I'm not sure how it does with black flies. I don't think it does anything for black flies, but black flies can be combated by just like a bug net over your head and a long sleeve. Like I found that to be as good as it gets for mosquitoes. Thermosel is the best. And then for everything else, just bug clothing and DEET, I guess. What editing software do you use? Premiere and the Adobe suite. How do you tolerate? Oh, I asked, I answered that one. Do you use an editor? Uh, sometimes I, uh, for my truck camping series, um, I had somebody help me out for two of the videos. I did the final passes on them. And uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, I would like an editor. I think that at this point, you know, me sitting here for this last like, you know, week editing and then for next week I'll be editing too. I could be out camping already. You know, I could be doing literally double the videos. I don't, okay, so I don't necessarily want to do double the videos all the time because I do enjoy my time at home. I don't necessarily want to be in the woods all the time, especially in the winter. I do enjoy, you know, having my time in the winter doing the camping video, but I like to be home in between editing because uh, winter, winter content is tough. But during the summer months, I kind of want to always be out. So I am probably looking for an editor um, for that. And uh, yeah, I'm looking for maybe even a full-time editor that can you know, kind of do, do stuff for me. I, I was like even a year and a half ago. You know, I keep saying that. Who's the strongest brother out of everyone? Max is pretty damn strong. Max is really strong. So Max is Max is the strongest. Uh, have you been to Alaska? No, but I would love to go. <laughs> hey, what's up up north of 60? Any plans of visiting the Northwest Territories? No, no, but I'm open to it. 
I would like to visit the Yukon. Watching Jim Baird series, I was actually just watching. Go check out Jim Baird series, and uh, actually also go check up up north of sixty. He makes amazing, especially winter camping content. Um, but I was watching the Jim series on the Yukon. Makes me want to go real bad. Um, my night better than wait, what is this? Make my night better, Xander. A happy fifty-five birthday to Nurse Mesa. Happy birthday, Nurse Mesa. Mary, <laughs> okay, happy birthday, Nurse Amina. I uh, good to see you. See you. Uh, I see you. You commenting often. Thank you and happy birthday. Happy birthday, uh, Xander. You are truly all that. Love your videos. I learn as I watch. Much appreciated, new camper. Great man. Keep at it. Yeah, we all start somewhere, and the longer you do it, the more you learn and there's always going to be those crap times but just i think the important thing is like realizing that there's going to be crappy moments and a lot of people give up too quickly it's like going to the gym it's like you won't enjoy yourself the first time you go to the gym it's like that consistency of going that you know you form these habits and you learn and eventually it turns into you know you being healthier and happier same with camping i mean like nature time is amazing it's amazing and being out in camp being out in the woods is rewarding and it's tough and it's challenging and there's so many different ways you could do it and you're gonna have bad times you're gonna have times where you don't sleep very well you're gonna have times where it pisses rain and you're cold and you're miserable and you're gonna have times where the bugs are just horrendous and a lot of people just stop right there like i hate bugs this ain't for me i don't like being wet i don't like being cold i like my bed i like my, i miss my shower i don't like pooping in holes it's like sure those are parts of it but you eventually get over those things mind you bugs are pain in the ass and uh, and you know i'll always be like ah black flies in my nose Ugh, could use i could do without them but you know if it means that i can get out in uh you know may then uh, i'll deal with them where did the poop tips go man i've taught you everything you need to know about taking a poop what more do you need <laughs> i'll bring them back i'll do a comprehensive poop tips uh video It'll be a it'll be a two hour epic of absolutely everything you need to know about pooping in the woods, starting from where poop comes from to where it goes and all the chapters in between. Camping in the prairies, uh, you know what Saskatchewan and the prairies? It, it's like one of those things where you just like you think about it as like a desolate wasteland, but I know that it's. It, I'm sure it's beautiful and I'm sure the locals have this, like, there's like a charm to it. So uh, maybe, you know, especially if I'm going, heading out, uh, heading out uh, West at some point in my truck, then, uh, then yeah, I would be camping in the prairies. Paranormal experiences. Um, no. Well, actually, yeah. Well, I don't often talk about this one experience, but, uh, there was this light that came over my tent when I was sleeping and, um, uh, and I was like, next thing you know it, I'm up in like this, this craft. It was all like metallic. It was very fuzzy. My, my, you know, my, my vision, but, uh, I just remember being probed and, uh, and then that was it. You know, I just woke up and back in my tent and mauled by a bear as per usual um do you have plans to do a boundary waters trip uh no actually do you need this boundary waters like a park do you do you need permits to film there i don't know i'm heading up north like um in the next couple weeks i'm gonna go do wabakimi so i mean it's probably similar to boundary waters I, I don't really know no no boundary waters plans but open to it how did you like the Alton tarp and where did you find out about it? Alton hooked me up. Uh, I've seen, oh, obviously I see uh, Scotty on walkabout using Alton gear all the time. And they sent me the Alton tarp. I, I like it. And you know what? So far I've used one of the grommet eyelets, you know, just the center one. That's kind of the go-to, but I, I'm looking forward to using, uh, using it to make interesting shelters later on. Very light duty. I, I ripped a hole in it the first time I used it. Uh, actually, I ripped a hole in it when I was trying to make that uh, smoker on my on my uh, my survival video, and uh, I patched it. When are you doing a full fam trip? Yeah, man, good question. I would love to do like a four boys, like me, Ben, Dylan, Max trip. 
um i don't know whatever i mean we're all kind of busy but i think it has to happen i mean we're gonna die eventually so if it doesn't happen then it's a shame but come october max me and then i think maybe my dad maybe ben and then my cousin ryan we're all going out so i got that new canoe to uh put two of them in and then as well as patches i'm gonna solo uh scratches so we're all kind of going out um favorite band don't have one do you have plans to do a boundary what oh, i read that ufo sighting sorry explained it um is your next journey with jim and ted when is the next i don't know man i'll, I'll go out with them whenever those guys are awesome love them you met mav no do you film every trip or do you take some trips just for yourself i kind of explain that it's kind of hard not to film and if i like i did this trip with my girlfriend and i was kind of only going to film a bit i ended up filming from the beginning to the end but everything was hand bombed it was like i put in two percent of the effort that i normally would on that trip and actually it turned out to be a video so i'm probably going to post it i'm sure you guys all want to see it do you recommend the duplex tent yes i do it's an awesome tent super lightweight i love the the design and stuff if you're if you're I'm 6'3", and uh, I'm kind of like a little bit too big for the tent. So if I slide one way or the other, I kind of like poke my feet underneath the 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 awning thing or like the, the roof of the tent. And then if it's raining, like water will come into the bathtub floor. And also the only pro the other problem with um, uh, these types of tents is they're like steak tents. And we film a lot on the Canadian Shield where you can't like put pegs in the ground. You have to rock out your tent. So it's kind of annoying to have to rock every single corner. Um, yeah. What would be your dream collaboration? Uh, Xander Bunnick, Elon Musk, uh, Starship flights around the moon. Do you ever ch crave a cheeseburger while camping? Yeah, man. Every single time I go camping, I uh, want to... Like, I'm just like, you're just like, you're like seven days or eight days or 10 days into a trip. And you're just thinking about that fast food burger that you're going to eat when you get out, you know, whatever the closest place is like Wendy's or if you're up north, it's like a &W, right? Can you film with your girlfriend? Yeah, we filmed a little GoPro video and I'll probably post that. I feel like you guys would definitely like that. Um, it's just like a GoPro video. I was going to post it on my second channel, but um, I'm just going to, might as well post it on the main channel because why not? Why is my boyfriend so annoying? Oh, man, I don't know. Probably, um, I don't know, does he eat a lot of Doritos and candy and just get, like, really hyper or or, or is he uh, is, is he eating too much? How's his digestive system? Does he fart a lot? I don't know. Maybe he doesn't get enough sleep. What was your job before YouTube? Uh, I kind of touched on that before. I was I did a little bit of male modeling, but that was only like a side gig. But I was doing construction renovations for many years, and then uh, I kind of took over my mom's like small business for a while. She kind of had it on hold, but it was like a business my parents created back in the day. Um, and then they just had this like um, this one resource for computers and used camera equipment, and I just. You know, you just like bought these like open box products, which were returns to this company. We purchased them in bulk, flipped them on eBay. It was like kind of a side, like an interesting hustle. Are you hip to it? I don't know what that means. Forerunner. I don't know. Do you do full time? Do you do YouTube full time? Yes, I do. I've been doing YouTube full time for almost three years. Hey, man, I got a mullet because of you. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> it's not as good as yours. What do you ask for at the barber? Just tell them, uh, just tell them you want the power mullet, you know? Got to float around, I don't know, long in the back and then like shorter. I got to, I got to get mine trimmed up. I got a massive forehead. So I got to like, I got to go to like a specialist who's like, who's like good with like big foreheads and, and the mullets, you know? I don't know. You just got to float around, man. Go to, go to, go to, go to, go to different, different shops till you find one. Um, but like, you know, that every great man in history had a mullet, right? Abraham Lincoln, Neil Armstrong, um, Martin Luther King, you know, Genghis Khan, mullets, all, all had mullets. And also like, you know, mullets of warrior's haircut, you know, it's like, you can see, you know, you can see everything around you. Right. But like, if you're getting attacked from behind, the mullet is there to protect, you know, it stops those blades. 
right? Stops that like grizzly bear attack on the back of your neck, right? All right. East End. Wait, what is that one? This is East End Meetup, I see. I don't know. I lost that one. I don't know if I'll ever have a meetup. I don't know who'd come out. It's always fun. If you guys ever see me in in the wild or non-wild, come say hi. I like talking to people. I love people. Does your girlfriend like camping? Xander should do a couple's trip. Yeah, we did our first trip together and it was a lot of fun. Uh, she it was not a camper, but she's open to it. And I took her on her first one and uh, it was quite fun because she uh, she's never like pooped in the woods and she did a great job. You know, I threw her outside her comfort zone and she we had a great time. Uh, yeah, well, maybe we'll do videos in the future. What's your second channel? I don't know. It's kind of, I just called it Xander Budnick too. I'm open to other names. Uh, nothing's really posted yet, but go check it out. If you guys subscribe, I'm going to start posting videos. Go do that. Go do that now. What time you? Have you done it? Just kidding. How did you meet her? We met at a coffee shop and then we had a beautiful first date. You ever come to Maine? I've never been. I hear the ticks are awful. Group trip. Max bench. Uh, two plates. It was on video and it was terrible. Like it was like, I was like, Aah! could do it again, but like, it's like, what's the point? No, I could not. As you in public. Oh yeah. All the time. Like I'd say somebody says hi about a week, every week. Um, your girlfriend pooped in the woods. That's a lie because women never poop. That's also a lie. What you're saying there. Everybody poops. Everybody poops. Do you walk around Toronto a lot? What's your favorite neighborhood? I live on the East End. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm out and about. Oh my God. So, hey, we've been doing this for a minute now. Are my brothers here? Are they out? Do they leave? Reporting in. Budnicks. Have you ever camped, hiked in Quebec? No, Max and I have been talking about doing some rivers. Marty's been inviting us and asking us and telling us. It's funny because Quebec is right there and it's large, but it's all in French and I can't speak French. All right, Max has got to go. That's cool. How much do you make off YouTube? I do pretty well. I mean, I don't know how, like, how, like, I, I earn a good living. I'm quite happy, you know. Eventually, I'd like to, you know, start taking out sponsored videos and stuff so I can hire an editor, move out of my basement apartment, you know, purchase gear, do bigger trips. What about getting a dog? Yeah, man. I think about it all the time. Okay, Max is out of here. Say bye, Max. Bye. What's in my fridge right now? Chicken. I'm probably going to travel to... Oh, cool. Some French name. Probably. <laughs> Uh, would you hire a cameraman? Uh, maybe for certain trips, I'm sure. But like, I don't know when that would be handy. I mean, if a cameraman came out with me on a trip, they would have to be doing all the same stuff that I'm doing, right? So it's like they'd have to be just as experienced. Can I be a moderator? Who are you? You England outdoors? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know you very well. You should get uh, a shih tzu. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, I do have a cameraman, by the way. Yeah, what are you talking about? Do, 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 do. All right, let's answer a few more questions, and I should probably wrap this up. Mm -hmm. You ever find yourself getting creeped out of the woods while you're solo? No, not really. I used to. You know, you, like, watch enough movies when you're younger, and you just think, like... You know, a typical like horror film is like you know, like a you know, a pan up of the of the trees, and it's like a it's like black and white, you know. So there's just like so many movies that are like horror movies in the woods, and you can't help but think that all these bad things are going to happen because all these movies that you've seen. Yeah, Gustavo, I often forget about him, and I underappreciate him. He is my full time cameraman, but you know, he's he's got limitations in his you know skills outdoors. Yeah, but, uh, but back to back to horror movies and and uh, being scared in the woods. No, I'm not scared of the woods. I don't watch horror movies anymore. And and also like you go out in the woods enough and you just realize like all that stuff is bogus. What's your favorite camping spot? Uh, the one I'm going to next, and it's always like that. 
Does, any, does every anyone ever call you Alex? No, not really. It's like, it's like not like I wouldn't respond to it. It's just not like really. I don't care, but like I, it's not like I would like notice it. Like it's not like I would. I'm not used to being called Alex or anything. I should wrap this up soon though. I'm I'm fading. You guys are awesome. I'm so happy that all you guys are here. All right. Okay, no firearms. Will you be my father? Yes, I already am your father. Uh, peace out, Xander. El Diablo was a horror show. <laughs> okay, yeah, you did it. Xander said no to guns on trips. I We, we can't carry guns in, in Canada. I mean, you can carry like a firearm, but it's got to be put a, like a rifle, but what's the point? Like handguns? No. Favorite survival movie? Castaway's good. What else is good? That's the first one on the top of my head. I don't know. They're all they're a bunch of good ones. Make a cookbook, please. I just wing this, man. There's some really good cookbooks out there. I got a dehydrated meals backcountry eats by uh, Kevin Ride. That's that's a good one if you're looking to cook meals in the backcountry and you want to dehydrate some foods. But a cookbook, yeah, it'd be fun maybe. Day one, no booze advice. Man, keep yourself busy. Keep yourself busy. You know, you're gonna keep on getting hit by those like all those things that like drag you to that habit of drinking. Right. You know, and just, just remind yourself like, no, like you're like, you're going to, Oh, this is where I go grab the beer. And you're like, no. And then you just go do something else. There's lots of books on habit forming power habit, atomic habits, you know, and if you're really struggling with booze, man, go to an AA meeting. Like they're extremely helpful. You're going to talk to people. Like, I know it's like one of those things like, Oh my God, AA, it's really not that bad. Everybody there is so chill. You gotta like hear speakers talk and, and you don't have to say anything. You can sit in the back. Like that's amazing. If you're really struggling, yeah, man, 12 steps where it's at. And, uh, but if you're trying to do it on your own, keep yourself busy, man. Like that time where you go form that habit of getting your first drink, go do something else, man. Go do something productive and like recognize that it's not going to be easy. Your body's going to constantly try to drag you there, especially if you have a physical addiction towards those things. So uh, best of luck, man. You got this. Like, honestly, if it doesn't succeed this first time, just keep going at it. But yeah, 12 steps, man. Really good. Um, see you tomorrow night. Oh, Ty. Oh, hey, buddy. Good to see you, man. <laughs> You're spamming. <laughs> good to see you, Ty. Ty's my friend, and, and we're hanging out tomorrow. Lost Lakes. Hey, I know you. Go to the top of the chat and answer all missed questions or you hate your fans john do you even understand how long this chat is okay we're going to the top here i can't go to the top would you go to no yeah like it's like there's only so many so high i can go i can only go so high up girlfriend reveal yeah i'm gonna post the video of us going on a canoe trip together it's just gopro it's like i filmed on a gopro hand bombed it in super view so it's super wide angle and not much b-roll but it's fun it's fun it's pretty chill beauty of the backcountry hey good to see you guys beauty of the backcountry yeah john was trolling don't fall into that trap yeah john's a troll don't listen to him um we'll go for a few more minutes this is a lot of fun it's hard to like wrap it up when it's just like so stimulating and fun uh what books am i reading right now uh what books am i reading i am reading Mushrooms of Ontario. And Marcus Aurelius, Meditations. And then I want to read this one. I want to read this one. But every time I pick it up, I kind of just get distracted. Um, but John said that's a good one. I'm starting to doubt his uh, you know, ability to make recommendations. Meditations is a great book. Yeah, I've read like half of it in the past and I want to pick it back up. Uh, will the next live stream be at 90K? No, I've been doing them every 200,000. Um, so yeah, every 200,000. I'm reading Clan Lands right now. All right. Will you go on the TV show? I've been, I've been asked that and the answer was probably not. Would you ever want to try building your own canoe? No, I don't think I can do, do that. <laughs> I don't think I'm, it would be, uh, I could like, you know, rope some logs together and then I call it a raft. That's like my, my extent of my bushcraft and, and skills. 
uh, what's my go-to takeout on the East End? Uh, fried chicken, man. Like Dave's hot chicken's pretty damn good. <laughs> Love you too, man. Please don't spam chat though. Ever get injured camping? I've cut myself pretty stupidly a few times. All right, let's answer one good question and then we'll wrap this up. There is one. Hiking with Sean says, I love your multi-day adventures in the snow. Keep them up. Yeah, I'll definitely do some more in the future. Evan Lee asks, who inspired you to start your videos or still inspires you? I kind of answered that before. Uh, who still inspires me? Man, there's so many great YouTubers out there um, that like I just watch consistently and they're like always pumping out great content and doing really creative things. I, I love... Um, Oh God, Samson Boat Co. They're building this like boat out of wood and I've been watching them for like three years. I like Donut Media. They're like cars. So it's kind of fun or, or, um, was it Corridor Crew or all like the outdoor YouTubers and, uh, sometimes Yes Theory, they do some cool stuff. Uh, sometimes, uh, like they're definitely like killing it. Um, that's who inspires me right now, I guess. And I love the stuff like the Bear Brothers are doing. Uh, who inspired me in the past? Um, Ian Wright is a big one. He's that like that travel guy. Or was it the Departures dudes who did those travel shows? Those guys were incredible. Um, people like that. Bear Girls was pretty cool. Not Bear Girls, sorry. Bear Girls was interesting, but um, Les Stroud watching Survivor Man. I never thought I would be doing Survivor Man type stuff. I'm, I'm not comparing myself to him. He does it on another level and he pushes himself harder than I do. Uh, but uh, definitely an inspiration and and uh, maybe not the reason why I want to make videos. I want to make videos because I just liked creating stuff since high school and it wasn't even YouTube based. Not, not YouTube based. It wasn't even outdoor based content. It was just like fun, goofy videos. Even like the jackass guys, like jackass and CKY when you're a kid, you watch those videos and you just want to make stupid videos yourself. So that was also an inspiration, you know. All those like silly things from the early 2000s, all the silly videos, like homemade things. Uh, all right, let's let's uh, let's wrap this up, guys. I think I'm due for, for some sleep and then get back to editing in the morning, you know? What's your favorite mushroom? Uh, Sun trails, maybe? I ate, oh man, I found a bunch of lobster mushrooms recently. And I uh, in my next video, you're gonna see that I found lobster mushrooms and black trumpets for the first time. <laughs> I kind of, I just ate them. Maybe I should have. But uh, yeah. Uh, can we see some of the prep and travel to your camping trips? Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's something for the second channel, you know? I don't know. We'll see. Okay, guys. I think that's it for me. I uh, appreciate all the, you know, everybody in the chat, everybody watching, all the questions. Um, have I tried uh, psilocybin? Yeah, I mean, in the past for sure. Um, <laughs> <okay. laughs> all right guys thanks for everybody for joining love all y'all um it's been an amazing journey 600 subscribe 600 000 subscribers is outrageous you know if you asked me three years ago if i'd be doing this full time now it's like yeah no i had no idea thanks everybody who donated that 500 dollar subscription 500 dollar um like donation from final like that's outrageous. Like, thank you so much. Um, and everybody who's tuned in. Yeah. If you guys have any, uh, like anything else, leave comments. Uh, I'll try to get to them. It's hard sometimes, you know, but, uh, yeah. Love all you. Have a good night and, uh, see you in the next video. Bye guys.